If someone asked me, do I believe that there are gender fluid people? I would say yes. It's like the definition of creativity. They're protean. Mm -hmm. And so there, there are, have been people who play at the edges of gender identity forever. And fair enough. And sometimes that's even admirable if it's done in a sophisticated way. And it's charismatic. I fucking love this video, Sitch. <laughs> I'm just so confused by well, this. Is he confused because he doesn't understand what they're talking about? Or is he confused because Jordan Pearson acknowledging this kind of fits all over their straw man version of Jordan Pearson? Number two. Number mind. two. Okay. Number right. two. This is like a fucking reality yeah. check for Vosh here. He's like, what? Yeah. What the fuck is going on here? If someone asked me, do I believe that there are gender fluid people? I would say yes. And uh -huh. I would say a ma man who's a young man. See, I bet you if you were to ask. I know. Fosh, I know. Any bread ahead tuber, of time. Ahead of time. Do you yeah. think Jordan Peterson would acknowledge that gender fluid people exist? I can almost guarantee you they all would have said no. Right. Their, their stereotype of Jordan Peterson is that he only believes in a gender binary where men are at the hierarchical top over women. <laughs> right. They think Jordan yeah. Peterson is the Bible-thumping creature who's trying to see, sneak social conservatism into the right. society. Right. When he's definitely 20% soy. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan Peterson's a good 20% soy. You know what he's like temperamentally? He's high in agreeableness. Oh, wait, I got to go back. This is important. Yeah, totally. Oh, so, so, and Vosh doesn't give Jordan Pearson any credit. No. Whatsoever for this. He, just he goes, does. Yeah. He does mumble under his breath. Oh, <laughs> like he, like he notices. He goes, yeah, good job. I would say yes. And Aww. I would say a ma that, man who's a young man. Who What's he say there? He says, ah. Like, seem, it seems like a, he's not, it seems like he wasn't expecting it though. Yeah, he, me, do I believe so that there are gender fluid people? Okay, we keep, I hold on. I keep talking over this part. This part's important. <laughs> oh, okay. That's that's not that there are gender fluid people. I would say yes, and uh -huh. I would say a ma man who's a young man who's gender fluid. I I know what he's like temperamentally. He's high in agreeableness. He's high in neuroticism. So he has a feminine temperament. He's more interested in people than things, and he's extremely high in openness. And so his temperament is fluid. Mm -hmm. He's creative. And this is exactly the kind of way that Jordan Peterson would talk about gender, where he would use one of these incredibly arbitrary pseudo-intellectual, like self-description based, like personality matrices to determine. Yeah, this sounds like it's coming out of like the, the 19th century right here. Like, well, I... <laughs> Wait. I know a gender fluid person. You see, the schizophrenic varies in openness and agreeableness depending on when you pull them. So, in a way, the gendered character, like, it, like this, this is this is meaningless. This isn't what, like, wait, gender is whether or not you're. So, what you guys just heard, okay, is that Vosh, our believer of science, just said. That the big five personality uh, trait theory is bullshit and pseudo intellectual and nonsense. Yeah. This is the most widely used, uh, I believe, personality test and personality theory in the world right now by psychologists. And with no evidence, because it came out of Jordan Peterson's mouth. Vosh just said, oh, this is pseudo-intellectual bullshit from, like, the 19, early 1900s. Yeah, I'm curious how, how Vosh makes his argument in favor of gender fluidity. Because, like, what tools does he use? <laughs> the tools Jordan <laughs> Peterson's using, he doesn't seem to be satisfied with. You know, right. these, these tools that have been around for for 50 years i went back i was telling uh, sitch before the stream began i went back and i read the wikipedia page on the big five personality traits and it's been studied and and peer-reviewed over and over again cited in other studies uh, and also not only that there were two different researchers that independently came up with basically the same idea 
that we're competing with one another in the same way that Betamax and, and VHS were competing. So, I mean, there's some pretty strong right. evidence that the, the big five personality traits are at least measuring something that has some sort of predictive power. So I'm just curious because uh, Vosh seems mystified. He says, wow, when Jordan Peterson says he thinks, you know, gender fluid could, could be a thing. But, so he's in favor of this idea, but what, you know, how would he conceptualize it? What is he, <laughs> what is he, what is he using to define, like, what's, what's going on here with this person? Right. Is it yeah. just whim? Is it just subjective feeling? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I can I can guarantee you that the big five personality traits has been studied and has more has a plethora of scientific research back yet more so than whatever theory of gender that Fosh believes. Yeah. <laughs> whatever, yeah, whatever his uh, neo Marxian theory of gender is, not backed up by the science, unlike the big five personality. I just, I just, to me, it was crazy. This shows you how deep the tribalism is. It comes out of Jordan Pearson's mouth, so he just immediately dismisses it. Well, and he goes off on this long, like he's really struggling to say anything meaningful. He goes yeah. on this substance-free tirade, just throwing words out right. <laughs> that don't. That well, I I can't really tell what kind of argument he's making. His other argument than Jordan is, Peterson bad. This is his argument. His argument is Jordan Pearson bad, and that. Since he can't intelligently critique the Big Five and say, oh, here's some studies that criticize or debunk the Big Five personality, right? right? Or here's my rationale for why I think the Big Five personality is not accurate and this rationale is backed up by people studying it. Okay, He doesn't do any of that. He says, oh, well, when you hear someone talk about like agreeableness and, and openness to experience and neuroticism, when you hear these words in your brain hole – it makes your brain hole think of in the early 1900s or even earlier when people would talk about like the humors in your body or phrenology or some of these other <laughs> oh pseudoscience God, things. It's so different than that. And so if I can relate some pseudoscience to some actual science to my audience, then my audience will just buy that, hey, that sounds similar, so it must also be pseudoscience. Yeah. It's totally, it's a very dishonest, bullshit, lazy uh, tactic. Do you, what, there's another system that I am skeptical of, and I think this, the, the psychology community is kind of put by, has set aside. Do you know the, it's like the INTJ personality type? The Meyer Briggs? Meyer Briggs, that's exactly yes. what it's called. Thank right. you. Um, yeah, yeah I, I think. That has not passed a rigorous peer review process, and I don't think no. that they use it that in th in therapeutic research. It's a more mm -hmm. in depth uh, personality type system, but I think that they've had problems with uh, testing, not being able to consistently test people over time. Like right. they'll test well, in the morning, it'll be different. I I'm only bringing it up because I think I believe Vosh references it in here and might be mistaking the Big Five personality traits for the maybe, Myers. That's possible. The Myers that's Briggs, possible. which is not necessarily as uh, right. Yeah, there's a difference too because the Myers Briggs is a personality type, mm -hmm. and this is personality traits. Okay? okay, so the difference is like the Myers Briggs, and I think all personality type. Uh, fields have had trouble being very scientifically replicatable and mm -hmm. proven, yeah. or I guess the you know, supportive evidence. Science. Yeah, yeah, because when you have a personality type, you're like very narrow. You're kind of narrowly, narrowly, legally putting someone into a box and saying like, these are personality types. You are this type of person, right? right? And people can change over time, obviously. And people can yeah. change. Also, it's very difficult to put people in boxes. People are very different from each other. But if you have traits that are just sort of like, well, you have these kind of broad oh, traits yeah. and then they okay, influence you. your behavior gotcha. in a, like a million different ways, yeah. that's a lot easier to quantify and to label sure. correctly. Yeah, that's more so. stable. Yes. Right. Less less boxy, more stable, and that that even goes to the argument that Jordan Peterson is making because he's saying, "Listen, I understand how someone can be 
gender fluid based on the big five personality traits open high yes. openness yeah the and i don't want to let vosh off the hook because maybe he is mistaking it for the myers Briggs, but he shouldn't be because jordan peterson has has said enough here that it's unmistakable what he's talking about that he's talking about big five right <laughs> aiden says uh into into J gang represent. Oh, is she down. I'm surprised. Is she down with in, that? I would have thought. I would have thought you would have been the uh, INTP, Aiden, not the NJ. Oh yeah, some people I noticed. Some people put it in their bio and stuff like that. They're really, right. They're really into it. They're like looking for someone that matches them. It's like I'm the I'm the INTP. Whenever I take those tests, the Myers Briggs test. Yeah, I don't. I. <laughs> I don't. I have memorized mine. The big five. Well, no, because I just when I look at the picture, I remember. It's like the little. It's the little scientist lady, the logician. The big five go. personality traits. Many people remember it by the acronym Ocean, and there's one word in in it that triggers the fucking shit out of bread tubers and and. Right. leftists alike you know wh which one it is it's openness conscien conscious conscientiousness mm -hmm. extroversion agreeableness and neuroticism, neuroticism. <laughs> yeah and they all they don't because neurotic being labeled neurotic has, has such a negative connotation they all lose so. their fucking minds right. how high do you think but see that's kind of a problem because all the other ones like you have openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, and agreeableness. None of these are negative traits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you have neuroticism, which maybe at the time wasn't a negative trait, but I don't know. Maybe they should change the word. I think because you're right. It's such a negative have, connotation. Neuroticism is the one that maybe is negative in any amount, but I think all of them can be bad if if abused, if pushed to like oh no, of an course extreme. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. They, they each 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 of the big five traits have negatives in direct like right. on a spectrum, right? You put the trait sure. on a spectrum, and there's going to be a negative in one direction or the if other. If you're too agreeable, you're a doormat. You know, extroversion right. too far. Now you're a fucking flasher. It's like, come on. Right. If you're too conscientious, that means you have no life and you neglect your family sure. and all you do is yeah. work all the time. Yeah. If you're too open, to if you're if you're too open, it means you don't have any stability in your life. You're one of those people who are like, oh. I'm never gonna get married. I'm gonna run around the country, you know, yeah. hitchhiking for the rest of my life. You know? totally. Yeah, all these things have negative and extremes are too right. negative. But and, neuroticism and it seems it. like a thimbleful of neuroticism. You're like, right. okay, well, that's not good. <laughs> right. Neuroticism does seem to be the one which is all bad. <laughs> I, I guess. my question because I don't. I thought about it, and I immediately wanted to throw some neuroticism shade Bosch's well, way, but I, I, I'm not sure you can be doing the kinds of things that Vosh and, and other YouTube commentators are doing and be high on neuroticism. Right. It seems well, like... Well, no. Yeah, you're, you're correct. But no, actually, no. The way you would look is like, okay, if you're too confident, right? Because the way they put neuroticism is it's sensitive, nervousness versus resilient and confident, okay? Mm -hmm. You do need to have oh, okay. some <laughs> nervousness. You do have to be some, some, you have to have some neurosis level because otherwise you would never doubt yourself. Right. And if you never doubt yourself, you're never going to grow and you're going to be constantly assuming that any problem you have in life is someone else's fault and not your own. Okay. True. And see, so like, if you're just brimming with confidence, and this is, and this is the thing, like, and I wouldn't be surprised, this is Vosh because Vosh is totally. like, he'll say the most dumb shit. With the same confidence level as something he's researched, you know, for ten years, right? He'll he'll say the, the same tone of voice. He'll say, "Oh, this thing I pulled out on my ass. I'm just as confident that this is this is true as something I've looked up and studied for five years in my life." It, it's true. It's totally right. true. He has zero yeah. neuroticism. He has zero neuroticism, which is a problem. It's a bad a thing. Yeah. Look at us, the ultimate fucking libs. There you you know, go. Everyone Ultimate needs centrist. a little bit of neuroticism. <laughs> Come on, guys. It's not all bad. If yeah, Fuduka just, just said for $5, neuroticism is positive when it allows you to detect liars and cheats. People low neuroticism can be taken advantage of. That's a good point, too. It oh, make really? you too trusting, I guess. Really? Yeah, if you're not neurotic oh, enough. Okay, good. 
Good. Yeah. Oh, here, all plus play. You're you press play. feeling agreeable that that you can. You, hey, do a personality test on me when I'm hungry versus when I've just had a big meal. Okay, you'll get two different people, I guess. See, this is why I think he might be confusing the two. Right. Un unawareedly, like I don't think Vosh. Act, like if this was a debate situation, we'd immediately ask Vosh if he knows the difference between the Myers Briggs well, and the Big Five, and he would not know. Also, what he's saying doesn't matter, mm -hmm. and he doesn't. I guess he like doesn't understand how personality works or behavior works, mm -hmm. because when you're hungry. The reason you get angry, or people, some people get angry when they're hungry, mm -hmm. is because their body literally starts sending their brain stress signals. Yeah, cortisol okay. spikes. Right. And so it's like, well, yeah, people, obviously, obviously when people are experiencing some sort of chemical mm -hmm. in their brain that goes against whatever their normal state of being is, their personality is going to be different. Someone's, like, just because if you were to take a personality tech test while, well, like, wasted mm -hmm. and drunk versus sober it's going to probably be different that doesn't mean that the personality test is wrong or that you don't have a personality it means <laughs> that when you have different chemicals affecting your brain your personality is different i, I who di who disagrees with any of this stuff? can you imagine coming out I'm, I'm sorry sir but you have no personality <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we've uncovered a, a dark secret <laughs> Sir, your your exact answers to the Big Five trait personality quiz, unfortunately, <laughs> is the one set of answers that means you actually have no personality. I have zero personality. You are the Keanu Reeves of people. <laughs> I hate to tell you. Oh, that's that so good bad. news. He he did have a successful career as an actor somehow. Oh, I know. <laughs> Beyond all odds, the one job you need to exude personality. It's the job that Keanu Reeves has somehow succeeded in. Don't you know the rumor about how he has a how he has a job? Uh, he made a deal with the devil. No, he gave some producer a blowjob. You don't know this story? Yeah, but that only works once, though. Well, <laughs> <laughs> right? Maybe, like, okay, huh? maybe that's how he got Bill and Ted. I don't know. Well, actually, he wasn't even in Bill and Ted. He's pretty decent. I don't know. If, <laughs> I don't know if the that's just like Hollywood legend or right. Or whatnot. I've never read that on the internet. I'm sure there's probably a there line on it somewhere. There you go. We're all sure gender fluid. True. So he's one thing one day. Hold on. What did he say there at the end? We're all gender I fluid. And then he throws in a, oh, we're all gender fluid, by the way. We're all gender fluid. Based on what science, Vosh? And you can't right. use the big five personality trait because you've already said it's pseudoscience. You got to bring it. You got to develop your entire own gender science. Mm -hmm. and one do a personality test on me when i'm hungry versus when i've just had a big meal okay you'll get two different people i guess we're all gender fluid so he's he's so he's like oh right based i just destroyed him <laughs> i just destroyed I this dude i just destroyed 30 degree 30 years of personality research with my one sentence oh i'm so based it's so bizarre to me that uh, this is just I mean, I feel a bit embarrassed for him. I honestly do. But I know <laughs> other people have a completely different perspective. Like, they're looking at this, and they feel embarrassed for Jordan Peterson. They're like, oh, my God, Jordan Peterson's right. so stupid. This 20-year-old could own him. A clinical psychologist who has been cited you know, hundreds of times <laughs> for his <laughs> research. What does he What does he know? I'm sure he doesn't know anything. I believe this... This uh, fat socialist streamer who I'm not sure what he studied exactly in school. I think he knows what's up here. That's exactly right. It's, it's certainly the case that one out of 10 women, now it depends on where you put the cutoff, mm -hmm. say, but you could say with reasonable certainty that one in 10 women has a masculine temperament and one in 10 men has a feminine temperament. And so that's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And those people, especially if they're also creative, mm -hmm. well, they're, they're I, kind of at a... <laughs> This Vosh is so confused by this. Uh, uh, I fucking love this video, Sitch. Vosh is so confused by well, this. Is he confused because he doesn't understand what they're talking about? Or is he confused because Jordan Pearson acknowledging this kind of shits all over their straw man version of Jordan Pearson? Number two. Number mind. two. Okay. 
Number right. two, this is like a fucking reality right. check for Vosh here. He's like, what? What the fuck right. is going on here? Right. I've been telling everybody that for three years now that Jordan Peterson only wants men to be hyperly masculine. <laughs> and now he's sitting here in a video that I'm commenting on. And he's saying exactly the opposite of that. Right. This is breaking Vosh's brain. Look at the look on the his cognitive face. Cognitive dissonance. This is co are we are here. witnessing cognitive dissonance here. This is exactly what we're witnessing. <laughs> we're witnessing the breaking of Vosh's right. worldview. He's going. Right. Wait a second here. <laughs> wait a minute. Not only that, Jor like Jordan Peterson's position is tangibly different than Ben Shapiro's, and Vosh yeah. doesn't understand any of that difference whatsoever. Right. He thinks Jordan Peterson is a carbon copy. Of right, Ben Shapiro. I was going to bring that up later. Is that he doesn't because Vosh has a straw man idea of Peterson, mm -hmm. and because he's demonized him so much to his audience, he can't um, give any be, give, be charitable here at all. He's not realizing that Peterson's actually pulling Shapiro to the left. Yes, more yes. Than Shapiro would ever probably acknowledge or admit to in a conversation with anyone else, basically. Jordan Peterson right now is doing the thing that Vosh would like to do more than anything. Right. More than anything in the world. Uh, Vosh would like to drag Jor uh, Ben Shapiro to the left. There's a... Well, I don't think like he's drawing, dragging him to the left like he's changing his uh, mind, but just like for the sake of the conversation, Shapiro will concede things that he wouldn't normally concede. He's not going to he concede him to Vosh, that's for sure. That he wouldn't challenge. Is it, there's a funny part in this conversation later where, uh, I forget the exact context, but we'll see it. Peterson is saying stuff, stuff to Ben, and Ben's just kind of like, yeah, 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 he's nodding. Mm -hmm. And then Peterson says like the one thing like that's too, too much, much that Ben Shapiro <laughs> doesn't agree with. And you see like his head just stops immediately. And he's like, w what? What? <laughs> Yeah, suddenly it becomes a lot more like uh, tepid. Yeah. This is great. This is totally... I'm going to back it up a little just because it's... I think we got another what in there. I'm not exactly sure. I'm to three confusion levels. What were you I'm at, at five. So You're at know. five? Oh, I must have yeah. missed a couple. A lot of temperament. And one in ten men has a feminine temperament. And so that's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And those people, especially if they're also creative, mm -hmm. well, they're, I, they're kind of at a loss... In no idea to what, what this has to do. <laughs> there you go. Okay, that's six, go. right? Are that's we on the six. same page? We're at six now. Okay. Yeah. Six. I have no idea what this has to do with anything. <laughs> Follow along, Vosh. Well, I mean, if you're following along, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're up to speed. We know what's going on. I have my big brain helper, though. So, I mean, obviously. That's true. <laughs> that's that's just true. a lot. You need a sitch in your life, Vosh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You've heard about rooftop Koreans. Have you heard about pocket sitches? <laughs> I know. Just find Enter the someone. promo code Shapiro for life. They get a free pocket sitch with your order. Look, Vosh, you're a big fucking streamer, okay? Just find someone twice as smart as you and invite them on. Whenever your elephant is on the rampage, your little pocket sitch will go, well, <laughs> stopping you back in reality. Well, I don't like that part, though. That part <laughs> fucking sucks, but... You know, it's, it's trade-offs, okay? It's give and take. In the moment, nobody likes their pocket sitch. No, but they afterwards, don't. They but don't. afterwards, they're very happy they had it. All right. They don't. <laughs> they don't. Kennedy, because they're pulled. First of all, they have a hard time catalyzing their identity. So what he's implying right here is that people who think they're transgender are just responding poorly to their um to to look at this he has no he's fucking totally he's bullshitting in. yeah he is totally making this up as he goes along yeah. why would you do this why he can't just listen why and understand it's easy to straw man yeah but he's he right now he's he not searching for a lie <laughs> like what the <laughs> fuck is he doing what is he doing? This is not based on any argument on any. Listen, we don't know if he's lying. He could just be really lazy or really stupid. Okay, we don't know. Look, we do know for a fact mm -hmm. that there he cannot say anything that makes either of these people, Jordan Peterson or Ben Shapiro, look good. Right. <laughs> he, and I know that 
he can't he can't categorize their argument in any kind of charitable way. Sure, but I don't think that's conscious. I think this is unconscious. No, I think it's pretty conscious. I think he knows he can't. No, I, I just he can't make them look all... good in any way, shape, or form. <clears throat> I think this is unconscious, but really, yeah. But I digress. Oh, I mean, I don't know. Maybe you're right. I mean, Vosh <laughs> is super. He's super mm -hmm. um, cautious of his rhetoric and the way he comes off. So you could be right. I'm conscious like, of people don't want us to like. If I'm going to give Vosh credit for anything, I'm conscious of people will not like that. Yeah, but but I'm still I'm, we I'm ignore still it. Do it. Yeah, exactly. Right. If he makes a good point, sure. thank goodness. Right. Right. Vosh never really makes a good point. So it's like the least conflict in my life whatsoever. <laughs> to their personality matrix being different from what you'd expect a person of their gender. Wait, let me go back. I know, I know. It's just, it's so funny because later on he accuses Jordan Peterson of word salad. You tell me what Vosh is saying here. You tell me what the fuck Vosh is He's saying stumbling. here. He's stumbling. He's implying right here is that people who think they're transgender are just responding poorly to their um, to 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 their personality matrix being different from what you'd expect a person of their gender to have. So I know I understand what you're saying. <laughs> it's um, it's completely wrong though because right. the personality. Well, uh, personality isn't gendered well no it, personality is not gendered but personality traits if you put them on a spectrum they will break down in a gendered way yes yes on average yeah, on right? average exactly right and that's what peterson was talking about and that's what vosh is vosh is vosh basically just re well here, here's the problem with vosh said okay he said jordan peterson he's claiming jordan peterson is saying that transgender people are just people who are confused because their personality traits don't match up with a stereotype. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's not what Jordan Pearson said. No. Jordan Pearson is saying that's why he doesn't agree with non-binary. Mm -hmm. The idea of non-binary stuff. Okay. He's not saying that people that have gender dysphoria are just confused people who have different personality traits. Okay. And Vosh lumped them in all together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, Under the he same can't belt. make the distinction between right. the non-binary argument and the transgender argument. Right. Which is the simplest thing in the world because if you, like, yes, the big five personality traits on average lean one way for men and the opposite way for women. Or not, not I mean, you can't even really call them opposites. Like one way on average, men display a personality type that's on average has certain characteristics to it. See, see, I'm struggling here because there's actually more differences inside the gendered category than there is between the gendered category. Sure, but there's still if you put them on the like, women if you were to score map higher them out. on neuroticism, men right. score higher on conscientiousness. I don't even know what right. they are. Yeah. Like women the, what, score what higher on agreeableness. Like, when you say that there's more differences mm -hmm. uh, in between in genders between men and women in terms of personality on the big five, it's that the the way each like the configuration of all the traits configure themselves uh, more differently internally than externally. However, if you were to take each individual trait and say on average, you could average down and say, oh, on average, a man will have higher x and a woman will have higher y right or whatever. yes yes or inverse actually if you're right that. right so but the fact that there are five traits is what makes it complicated because you can right. point to any one factor and say you know this is the av you know the average of women's score or this is the average of men's score right and i think there's some people that think there's a sixth personality trait mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. called horniness <laughs> I don't remember what the sixth personality trait is, but or oh, is that openness to new experience? Big five horniness six, might be under openness to to new experience. I'm not sure. Whatever hit it, I can't find it. 
the science changed in the chat says men are higher on the better traits. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Whatever those traits are. Terrible. That's what that is actually what Vosh believes Jordan Peterson should be saying right now. Yes. <laughs> because that's the straw yes. man version of Jordan Peterson that Vosh has been streaming about for three years now. So are we both we're both confident in saying that what we well, know uh you're saying what Vosh is saying is incorrect but still coherent. It's coherent. Right. Yes, yeah, not just word salad. He mm -hmm. just basically kind of rephrased what Jordan Pearson said, but then attributed it mm -hmm. to a group of people and Jordan Pearson's not attributing it to them. Right. Gotcha. This is this is basically an equivalent. This is like Jordan Peterson's version of the argument that you know, back in my day, we used to have tomboys, but now they've all got to be like trans men, or you know, back in my day, we had quiet, sensitive boys, but now we've got to be, they've all got to be trans women. It's basically just a way of saying like before gender ideology, there were just people with different personality types, and now you know they're being wokely convinced to be trans. Does, I wish what? Vosh, does he agree with that or disagree he with disagree, that? He disagrees, but I'm, as I was saying, what's wrong with that argument? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's, nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong with that argument. And in fact, the way he described it, describes it sort of accidentally gives the game away that it's wrong. Mm. Because the way he phrased it was, back before we had gender ideology. Oh, he did say that. Right. And it's like, wait a minute. Shouldn't this be like back before we, like if you actually believed and all this non-binary gender shit. Okay? Yeah. Shouldn't it be like, well, back before we understood gender, mm -hmm. but he didn't say it's back before we understood gender. He said back before we had gender ideology. So right. it's like, okay, back before we had this insane ideology attached to gender, right. you know, people were fine being, you know, quiet males or tomboy uh, women, and that was fine, and that was acceptable. Yeah, I don't... I... I'm curious because they, on the bread tube side, put so much stock in social pressure being a bad thing, but they don't. They never really consider that there is there is this new paradigm <clears throat> where people are being confused in whether or not you know they're a tomboy or a trans right. man. Well. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. That's, mm -hmm. a, that's actually a really good point. And uh, Steven Pinker sort of talks about this in the Blank Slate book, where he has like the noble savage myth mm -hmm. that, you know, if it wasn't for oppressive society, we'd all be living as, you know, yeah, Native free. Americans in headdresses, hunter gathering on the plains, and we'd all be happy, right? Mm -hmm. And that's often why people on the left come come at it with this idea that, like, Babies are born innocent, and then they're socialized to be evil because they all have this like noble savage myth, kind of as their axiomatic belief. And the reason Vosh and their leftists don't then equate it and say, "Wait a minute," when it comes to transgender stuff or any of the gender stuff, how do we know that that's not culture that's influencing children? And the reason they don't perceive of that obvious flaw or hypocrisy in their thinking is because they only view things through the oppression hierarchy. Mm -hmm. So when they say society makes people evil, what they really mean is oppressive society makes people evil. Mm -hmm. and, this, so basically, and the gender ideology is non-oppressive? Right, because what they would probably argue is that they would say that the idea from the get-go that there's only oh, okay, two genders or two sexes is, is the, the oppressive oppression. patriarchy. Yeah. Right. And that if we didn't live in an oppressive society, we would never have developed these categories of binary gender in the first place, and everyone would have been free to be a non-binary special snowflake. Right. But then again, I would say, and this is all hypothetical too, I'm sort of arguing both sides here. I would say, well, that's kind of a bullshit argument because that's the side that wants to create more categorical labels. <laughs> that's the side that wants to create more boxes to shove people in when it comes to gender. Right, yeah. So... Yeah, my my problem with it is that you are 
how can you say that you have more freedom if you're socially pressuring people to pick one like if you're a tom if you're a tomboy you know a girl that is very uh, boyish or or manly and before that was perfectly fine you weren't in a situation where society was stepping in and saying listen we have a problem here you may be a tomboy but you also may be a trans man and now you have to pick one isn't that more socially oppressive to step up and say yeah but they don't care about freedom it's not about freedom right but i'm just saying that's a that's (laughs) <laughs> that does seem, regardless of their ideology, it does the, seem more oppressive right. to me that people are stepping in and saying, you know, forcing people to choose. I, I I think the issue is that since they use the term oppression and they frame things as oppression, you would think they care about freedom because freedom mm-hmm. would be conceptualized as the opposite of oppression. Well, you can, but I don't think that's actually what's going on. I think it's because the goal isn't freedom. The goal is deconstruction. Okay, so like the oppression is the structure, right? We're being structured and the structure itself is oppressive and bad because it's structured and we want to deconstruct everything. Well, I mean, I I can conceptualize the, like the more options on either side, like the, the, the less oppression on either side of this because you could also say, listen, before they didn't have a choice and that was oppressive now that they have a choice of being a a tomboy or a trans man that's a better society because there's more options less you're also you're we have to remember under the liberal framework Mm -hmm. okay under the liberalism framework the the attitude towards quote-unquote like equality was don't prejudge people because we care about individuals. Don't prejudge men and women based on the fact that they're men or women. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if they're a man or a woman. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's the liberal framework that we're all operating under or that we're operating under. But the, the neo-Marxists don't operate under that liberal framework. And so since they don't care about individuals, they only care about classes of people, they don't want you to them. It is neither effective nor desirable to say, listen, Treat yourself as an individual because they don't think that society or the world looks at people as individuals. They only look at them as classes of people. So for them, if you give up your your gender category as it being important, it's basically you giving up your power Mm -hmm. because you you can only gain power in society under the neo-Marxian framework by organizing around whatever your, Mm -hmm. your group collective identification is. So are you saying that the 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 choice that they would make the person I'm just saying the hypothetical person who is a a, a more masculine woman who's a tomboy mm-hmm. who has a choice to make whether or not they want to present as a tomboy or a trans man right. you're saying that this uh, Marxian group orient group dynamic thing is going to affect their decision on making that choice or yes yes based on because it it affects it affects the way these issues are argued Mm -hmm. okay 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 because under i got you and so that and then that changes the way people think about them right right so they're really only thinking of it in terms of you know, winning arguments on the internet. They're not thinking in terms of, I mean, I'm trying to, I'm trying to reason it out from the perspective of that tomboy who now, you know, life was easy. I perceive it. And obviously that, you know, I'm biased by my own perceptions, but mm-hmm. I perceive it as it was more advantageous for that person, you know, who was a tomboy not to have to make a, a choice, but now, I mean, that would just drive me insane. Like people would come to you and say, listen, you have to decide. And there's this clicking, uh, there's this clock, this biological clock ticking that you have to decide before you hit puberty. And you could be suicidal if you decide incorrectly. There's all these uh, social pressures, social dynamics that seem to me to be a lot more oppressive than, than liberating. Right. 
Yeah. Do you do you get the distinction that I'm making there? Yeah. No, I I understand exactly. What you're but that doesn't trigger into like winning arguments. No, on they the don't care about any of that stuff. No. Right. Because no. they don't care about the individual. They right. don't care about. Because they don't care about the individual. Vosh doesn't about, care about that person. That right. one person. Right. It's all about the class of people. It's all about power dynamics. Right. Where who is more power. oppressed, the the Tom boy or the the trans man? I don't know. That's a good question. Who has more power in society? Depends on the society, right? Right. Anyway, I'll be right back. Creative people have a hard time catalyzing mm -hmm. it. It's like the definition of creativity. They're protean. Mm -hmm. And so there, there are, have been people who play at the edges of gender identity forever. And fair enough. And sometimes that's even admirable if it's done in a sophisticated way. And it's charismatic. So you see it in Mick Jagger. You see it in David Bowie. Mm -hmm. You see it... And you see it in people like Madonna as well, because Madonna had a hard edge, you know, that was very mad. This is Vosh. I love this video because Vosh just seems completely bewildered. Like the look on his face is just bewilderment to me. And maybe maybe Sitch is right. Maybe he's dialing it in. But the the examples that Jordan Peterson is giving, I mean, they're good examples. I, you know... I back in the eighties when you know there was glam rock and and David Bowie and Mick Jagger those guys didn't those guys wore effeminate outfits all the time and it didn't they weren't chastised for it society didn't look didn't uh, look down on them for doing that that all kinds of people were challenging the gender norms back then and society loved it every moment of it so i just i it's funny that uh vosh is can't make the connection ask him and all the marvel superhero women have a hard masculine right. head again like i i've noticed this every time that i talk about jordan peterson he is a massive sophist he really does say nothing of value and now i want you guys to understand that's a very strong criticism to levy at a person who, with a, with undeniably a greater degree of education than myself, uh -oh. but I say happened? this with great confidence. He really. What is? It? What just happened? What did I miss? He's saying like, this is a strong degree of criticism to levy at someone. We can we can back it up. You barely missed any of it, but okay. he's calling Jordan Peterson. So Jordan Peterson was bringing up the fact that we've always had celebrities that were challenging gender norms. He cites David Bowie. Mick right, Jagger, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, right. And he talks about obviously. Oh, that way. Let me go back. That was the part I think. Yeah, this part. This you. part is fucking amazing. Is yeah. that's a brands. Creative people have a hard time mm -hmm. catalyzing mm -hmm. it. It's like the definition of creativity. They're protean. Mm -hmm. And so there, there are, have been people who play at the edges of gender identity forever. And fair enough. And sometimes that's even admirable if it's done in a sophisticated way. So he's describing <laughs> art, the artist types. Yeah. I want you to watch Ben Shapiro's face. Oh, and watch his, like, mm -hmm. he's and so agreeing. There, there are, yeah. have been people who play at the edges of gender identity forever. Yeah. And yeah. fair enough. Yeah. And sometimes that's even admirable if it's done in a sophisticated way. And it's charismatic. Uh, <laughs> it's <kinda> like, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you're right. You're totally right. That's a good yeah. catch. Like... Because he like kind of went to nod like, and then he kind of what s maybe not. He's like, uh, I'm not. S I he's like, I wasn't down when David Bowie was uh, doing that weirdo <laughs> stuff. Okay, Ben. Now listen, we might be reading into it too much, but to me, it's funnier to kind of conceptualize the conversation. I'm not. I <laughs> yeah. I I don't think Ben Shapiro probably had a problem with that gender bending I stuff, know. but. This is funny. Hi, you just listened to a clip from the Sitch and Adam show. If you like what you heard, you can listen to our live show right here on this channel on Sunday, starting at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. And if you want, you can super chat us. We read $20 and up super chats on the show and then do a follow-up stream on the following Tuesday where we read the rest of the unread super chats and interact with fans of the show. Subscribe to this channel right here to listen to the live show or to listen to more of our awesome clips.